But what we do see is a guy who's very competitive, um, that takes his job serious, and, and he has an opportunity. If Aiden's not able to go and he's a starter, it's another great opportunity for him to showcase himself. Coach, with Brock Bowers, obviously he's getting all the highlights before covering him. He's getting the respect he deserves. However, it's also becoming a challenge to get him to opt in on your offense yesterday. Yeah. You only looked for him a few handful of times. So moving forward, how much more of a challenge is it, and how much more do you expect from Scott to be able to provide those opportunities for him? Yeah, me and Scott talked about that this morning, just finding different ways to move him around, put him in different positions. He's now becoming, obviously, a key factor for us, but also a key factor for teams to stop. Um, and we're never going to get not think about throwing a Brock. Let's put that out there first and foremost. He's our number one option and probably our last option. We'll go through that. Um, but you got to be smart with the ball. We can't force throws because that happened in the game as well. Force the throw, we got interceptions. So we got to be smart with that. Um, but again, you know, we are more efficient offense when we get Brock going. And obviously, it was a big day for Big Mike. You know, it was good to see him going. So again, the way the game uh, kind of shapes out each and every week is going to change. And you go into it with one plan. And, it creates opportunities for other players, and those guys have to step up as well. Now that you had a chance to check out the film, is it anything you could identify why you guys got off to such a slow start and then had to rally back? Uh, early in the game, on um, third down, short yardage on defense, that was the number one thing because that was a long drive to start out the game. Um, kind of anticipate them uh, that they would accept and take the kickoff and get their offense out there. Um, I thought offensively, you know, we had a shot on the very first play and we're you know, a yard or two away. We had another opportunity with Big Mike. That ball's incomplete, so you can see that we're trying to be aggressive out the gate. Didn't hit those throws, created a short field, and now you know that's what happened. It gets a very explosive offense. But pump the brakes. Second quarter, these guys kind of focused, dialed in. Thought did a great job competing. You saw the defense there with the three turnovers, and then the offense finally got going a little bit. Hey, look, we're going to have 14-10 with the ball. And the third quarter, we had the ball for whatever it was, 10 plus minutes down inside the 10-yard line with an opportunity to be down by one or take the lead. I know that wasn't that you didn't get any points on that drive, but it was 16 plays in over 10 minutes, very balanced. It's something that you talked about a lot. Is that the drive you were looking for? Yeah, I thought, you know, sincere again, McCormick, that offense, O line, outstanding job, you know, hat for a hat. McCormick, sincere being very decisive in his running, running behind his pads, making the first defender miss, and even making it there's a mistake up front, making it right, you know, by being decisive. So, really good drive there. Again, we just got to finish it. And that's been kind of our. That's been our theme this year, right? Getting down all the way into the red zone inside the five and then pump the brakes and, you know, it doesn't go our way. So we've got to continue to work on that, which we'll do this week. Coach, just a quick follow-up question. You mentioned Sierra McCormick. Can you talk a little bit about him and just how much him being on the practice team has helped him come in and take on this role? So towards the end of last year, I remember him coming up to me. and I was familiar with him, but not, not so much. And he asked me, what do I need to do to get a bigger role, to get in a game? I'm like, man, you, you know, got Josh Jacobs at the time. He's a mirror. I'm like, you got to have a great offseason to work. Well, to his credit, he did. He had a really good offseason. He came in. Again, you're not really talking about him. But to be honest, when we are in training camp, his name came up a lot. But he was down the road. And one thing I told him once you know, we made the decision with the 53 man roster, he was on the practice squad, just keep working the same way you've been working. You never know when your name's going to get called. And the one thing about him, he was ready. And what we've seen in practice and what you're now seeing in the game has been that consistent player that's worked, that grinds, that's taken care of the opportunity take care of the football, running behind his pads, giving us that spark. In the last few weeks, you know, each every week, I think he's got yeah, 6, 12, and yes, I believe 15 or 16 carries. This is going to keep improving, and it will again this week. Seen the same sort of thing with Jason, with these, this gentleman? Yeah, no, I think he's done a really good job, you know, understanding his role, right? And I think that role is growing more and more as he's making plays and getting more comfortable within the scheme and working together with our, our front four, which is really critical because everything we do filters towards Max and we free up Max. So then when you have those opportunities to win your one-on-one matchups, you have to do it. And I thought he did a hell of a job. Because early on in the game, we got popped on that same screenplay for an explosive. Later, second quarter, he recognizes, that's back, tips, the interception. So good football IQ by a good player. Coach, when you, talk, when you look at the performance of the O-line, there was a couple of snaps there. Was that just poor communication, or was it was just bad snaps? Oh, the quarterback center change? Yeah. Yeah, that was poor between the quarterback and center. With Brock, uh, in some of these games where he has been held in check, do you see any consistencies on tape that the opposing defenses is, are doing, or is it more you know, up to execution on, on your side of the ball? Um, no, I think it's also the quarterbacks just being smart with the ball, not forcing it. Right? If it's not there, it's not there. If it's not there, it's not there. Go to the next receiver, the next open player. And obviously, there's a lot of times that, you know, because Brock's getting double teamed, he is a decoy as well. It opens up the game for somebody else. And 
to be honest, we expected Mike to have a big game. We expect a lot of receptions from Mike just the way they were going to play base defense and their uh, Bronco package, five D linemen and one linebacker. So we knew we'd get the matchups with Big Mike on the guys that we wanted. And those are the throws that we made. And I thought Mike had a really breakout day. It was good to see him get going, you know, giving up his body, jumping, diving, all that good stuff. So um, that's just the nature of the beast. That's good. Cool. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.